hospitalizations actually basically flat, technically uh, tick down, which is probably the first tick down. So that's a good sign, but basically flat. So we think we are at the apex, on the plateau. The number of hospitalizations went up, flattened, continuing to flatten, good sign. Technically, the number's down a tad, statistically irrelevant, but better than being up. The net change in total hospital hospitalizations, if you look at the curve, which is what we look at, the curve is down. When you do the three-day average, which is more accurate than any one day, because remember, this reporting mechanism is, is new. Uh, we just put it in over during this situation, so I wouldn't bet all the chips on any one day. But when you look at three days, you look at the overall curve, uh, we think it's indicative. So the three-day average is down. The net change in ICU admissions is down. Again, the ICU admissions I take with a grain of salt since hospitals are no longer what they were, and they're basically all ICU wards. Intubations is a real number. That's the number of people who are being put on a ventilator. About 80% of those people will never come off a ventilator. So when you see the intubations, uh, that is proportionate to uh, the number of people we will lose. And that's what we've been watching all along. People go into the hospital, most get treated and are discharged. Uh, some are not discharged. If they're intubated, about 80% of the people who are intubated will not come off the ventilator. The number of new people going into the hospital per day is also down, but we still have 1,600 new COVID cases yesterday. So we have 1,600 people new coming into the hospital, some being discharged, uh, and the net is what we've been watching, but it's also interesting to note that you still have 1,600 new people walking into the hospital or who are in a hospital and then diagnosed with COVID. So the volume is still high, and that's why the hospitals are still working very hard. We have been watching for growth uh, outside of New York City, Long Island, Westchester, Rockland. That has basically been flat. There have been little hot spots here and there. Department of Health has been very good and aggressive in jumping on those hot spots and tamping them down, test, isolate, trace. And you see the numbers uh, by uh, region across the state. Uh, proportionately, obviously, downstate New York, which, which is what we've been talking about, but looking for growth towards Long Island, Westchester, Rockland, uh, rest of the state, proportionately, upstate is very, very low to everything else in the state. Uh, this is something else we're watching. This is the number of deaths in nursing homes. And the nursing homes have been an increasing issue. The nursing home issue was flagged by the first cases we had in the state of Washington because that is the vulnerable population in the vulnerable place. And we've been worrying about nursing homes from day one, as we saw in the state of Washington. Uh, but you see the percentage of loss of life is getting higher in the nursing homes compared to the hospitals. Lives lost yesterday, 778. That number is up, and that is, uh, to me, the most uh, painful number. And it has been the most painful number every day. And those New Yorkers are in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, you look at the past few days and the number of lives lost, it's basically uh, flat at a devastating level of pain and grief. But it evidences everything else we're seeing, which is basically a flattening at this level. The statisticians will say number of lives lost is a lagging indicator which is a nice scientific term, uh, but it doesn't mean it just is not just terrible, terrible, terrible news. 
and nothing we can do about it. Uh, although many New Yorkers are doing everything they can to save people's lives on a daily basis, a great personal cost to themselves. Total number of deaths is 10,834.